In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the front glass on the newest Apple Watch. This is the Apple Watch Series 5. I just went to the Apple Store and bought a brand new one. I've already done a teardown video of that, uh, of that watch. So in this video, you won't be seeing me remove the screen. You can watch that in my other video because I've already removed it for that. But you will be seeing how to remove the glass from the display, which is very complicated. And especially this, this repair in particular because they're, the screen is not broken. Uh, when a screen is broken, it is easier to re remove the, the, uh, the glass because you have access to the edge of the display. And you'll see why in this video, how, why it's so difficult. But this is for those that have like a single crack, for example, across the front. Um, if you can do it this way, you can do all the other ones, but it is very complicated. Um, so uh, let's get to it. So here's my brand new Series 5. Super satisfying to open up. A brand new Apple Watch. I love the way these boxes slide open. My tests simply consist of making sure that the force touch works and that the touch all around the screen works along with the display being perfect. So now that we've removed our screen, I'm going to be using this wire. This is a 0 .04 millimeter wire. Um, you can find this online most places. I couldn't film this next part, um, but uh, under my microscope I was able to uh, maneuver the wire under the digitizer. Very tricky, very difficult because there is no access to the edge of the screen simply because the glass is covering up the edge of the screen all around the screen. Now you'll notice how I continually change positions with my hand, uh, each hand because I need to make sure that the wire isn't putting too much pressure in the upwards direction so that it doesn't cut into the digitizer and therefore ruining the digitizer and potentially uh, ruining the display in general. So I continually uh, rotate around not only the screen but the heat plate changing the position of my hands uh, letting there be specific slack on the wire on either side it's something you kind of have to get a feel for but once you kind of have a feel for it, um, it it becomes a little easier now this is super tricky I have done hundreds um, and hundreds of these repairs so it's uh, more natural for me um, but uh, but once you get the hang of it, it uh, um, and do enough, it becomes easy. I'll gently lift the screen out. And we're just left with some you know, chewed up adhesive there. I'll take that glass piece off. You can kind of see where the wire was because it leaves a, a little bit of uh, uh, marks there with the residue from the adhesive. Now using some acetone and a clean room wipe, I'm going to go ahead and clean off the display. And with my finger, I'm going to gently rub off any of the old adhesive. This adhesive is, is quite sticky and, the, uh, and as you pull at it, the display tends to flex. And as long as you're being gentle and taking your time, uh, you, you can get it off without damaging the display. If you rush this, you can damage the display. Um, you can delaminate uh, the uh, digitizer uh, from itself and from the display. And uh, we're going to go ahead and clean up the glass as well. Uh, I typically don't have to do this part because I'm t typically just removing broken glass, but this piece of glass is still good, so we are going to go ahead and reuse it. I could simply use a, a new uh, a new piece of glass, um, you know, that I have 
in stock for the repairs that I do on the series four and five, but uh, um, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and clean up this this piece of glass. See, there's another one we could use, but um, we're gonna go ahead and use the one that we just cleaned up. Let's go ahead and connect the display. This will give us a chance to test it to make sure that we didn't damage the display in the process and also that the touch is still functioning and that we didn't damage the digitizer in the process of removing the glass as well. Now there are many steps in this repair that, um, that can go wrong. So, uh, uh, you know, if you're going to try this repair, uh, I'd be extremely careful. Just going to go ahead and get a thumbnail here. Now, one of the reasons that this uh, repair is so difficult is because Apple has decided to add a, a digitizer um, and completely change out uh, the, the type of the display um, that that they have. This is a what a digitizer looks like. This is the touch screen of an Apple Watch. This is a Series 4, but it's almost identical in the Series 5. And you can see how flexible they are. They're also very brittle. I don't know if you can tell, but that one snapped right there. And it only takes a little bit of pressure in the wrong direction uh, to, to break that. And so with the wire that, uh, with the wire that I use, it's very easy to, uh, uh, to damage it because the wire is so thin, it's like the edge of a knife. And uh, if you're not applying the pressure in the right direction, um, and uh, then then the chances that you ruin not only the digitizer, but that you cut into the display, the polarizer, things like that, are substantially high. That's why you're not going to be uh, seeing many repair shops doing this repair. Um, if they are, they're 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 gutsy. That's really cool. Um, hopefully, they uh, they get some good instruction from my videos, so they don't uh, ruin too many watches in the process. These right here are all Apple Watch displays. Every single one of them. My buddy's done so many Apple Watch repairs that he turns them into artwork. Now if you haven't seen Zach's uh, video there, that's where we remove the back glass on, the, uh, on an iPhone X using my laser machine. I'd go and check that out if you haven't already. It's a really cool video. So we'll disconnect the display and uh, now that we know that everything's working, uh, we're going to give it one last uh, uh, cleaning as well. I have this little uh, wax uh, stand that I put it on. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and add uh, a little bit of uh, LOCA. LOCA is, stands for Liquid Optical Clear Adhesive. It's an uh, adhesive that um, allows me to adhere the glass um, and center it. Um, without issue. Now using something like OCA or OCA, optical clear adhesive, um, is something that can be done but it's tricky to get the display perfectly centered um, and this way I find is the easiest way for me to simply uh, uh, line up the glass and it allows me to move it around so gently and slowly I'm gonna lower the glass down and you'll see it. Uh, the adhesive will touch the glass and um, and spread and if I do this carefully enough I won't get any bubbles and uh, of course uh, when I'm doing it for the video I do get a bubble you'll see later on in the video and I'll let this naturally uh, move away its way from one edge to the other um, it's kinda hard to see but I'm gonna try to point out the bubble uh, if I get a light on it, it'll be easier for you to see um, see the bubble there. And you can see the uh, the uh, the loca still um, uh, continuing towards the corners. It's traveling. There it is. You can kind of see the bubble there. I typically don't get those, and but uh, with a little bit of pressure from the back and the from the front, I can chase it out. Now I don't like to have to do that because it causes a little bit of squeeze out of the uh, of the oka or uh, of the loca, and the uh, um, it's it's kind of messy, which requires a little bit of cleaning.
And now under my microscope, I'm going to be uh, centering the, the display and using a UV light to uh, slowly solidify the, uh, um, the loco as I center it under my microscope. And once I'm content, I'll hit it a little bit harder with the, the UV light um, to make sure it, it kind of holds its place. I'll clean up any of the uh, the excess loca that's uh, there, and I'm going to leave the light on it for a little bit. And then we're going to move to uh, uh, fully cure it here. Um, now some of you might recognize this uh, uh, little uh, contraption here. It's a simply a, a, uh, a UV light uh, for uh, uh, doing nails. You'll see these at nail salons. You stick the hand in there. Um, as you can see, I've got... Um, a little grid sit in there. I've gotten, I normally do nine watches at a time per, uh, um, uh, per light there. And here's kind of another version of that clip uh, that you saw Zach uh, from Jerry Rig Everything uh, do. These are uh, some of the watches that, uh, that I've done. And we'll go around front as well. And you can see a little bit more of what I've done with the, the watches. And of course, being a repair shop, other things like iPads and screens. Now I have uh, I have been working on this shop, so if you're interested in in watching how I've taken this shop from a, an empty space with just concrete and and studs all the way to this, I've I've done a series of videos that I haven't put on YouTube. But if you're interested, uh, uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll and I'll uh, uh, put a uh, put those videos up. And you can see here's the box of the uh, the Apple Watch Series Five. And only minutes after I've taken it apart, here here's the screen uh, becoming uh, refurbished. Now we'll go ahead and connect it again so that we can test it. It's giving me a little bit of trouble. Let's There you can see the apple symbol. That's a good sign. We'll test the touch. Make sure that's working. Check and make sure the force touch is working as well. Looks good. Everything looks good. Let's move on to adhering it. All right, to adhere it, we're going to use this. It's a E8000. It's a medium viscosity uh, glue. Um, there's quite a few uh, pretty nice things about it, uh, uh, characteristic-wise. Things like, for example, um, uh, that it uh, its uh, uh, drying time is is about five minutes or so. Um, it takes about 24 hours for it to fully cure. Um, it's transparent which is nice, it's a soft glue, um, uh, and, and it has up to high strength, which is basically what you saw removing it. You saw maybe, maybe a medium strength original Apple adhesive that was able to hold away. It doesn't whiten, it doesn't actually hard, like get hard, uh, um, uh, because we still need that, uh, we need it to bounce a little for the force touch. Um, and it also isn't that uh, strong, it doesn't have a, a, a heavy odor um, it's also um, um, waterproof. I mean, it'll help m make the watch more wa water resistant. But I wouldn't trust the uh, the watch now that we've taken it apart that uh, for it to be uh, as uh, water resistant as it was before. Um, I don't trust brand new Apple watches to be water resistant anyway, because I've seen too many brand new ones uh, fail um, the water resistance. I had too many people contacting me for repairs, brand new watches, things like that. Um, um, 
yeah, it's a, it's, it's a nice flexible waterproof adhesive that uh, mimics uh, almost identically the original Apple adhesive. Um, and uh, it's very easy to apply because in this particular one, it comes with a, a, a nice fine tip that allows me to, to uh, the bead is about the width of the force touch sensor anyway, so it allows for perfect adhesion there. Um, and then uh, um, it's easy to clean up, while, especially while it's still um, wet, and so it's easy to do that. I use these this this adhesive for a lot of things, putting the back glasses back on the uh, the iPhones when I do the back glasses and things like that. But uh, um, it's it's a uh, when I'm taking a watch apart again for whatever reason after putting this on, it's it, it basically it's as if it was the original stuff as far as how hard it is to get off and how easy it is to clean up and the way that it pulls away, the way that it looks. So, not sure if this is exactly what Apple uses, but it's it's very comparable, so. Um, pretty straightforward process um, in adhering it, basically. Um, let me get my light on here. I like to do this under my microscope like everything else so that I can uh, see that I've got an adhesive everywhere. And I'm basically going to draw a nice little bead and follow it around the force touch and meet back up at the beginning make sure a little antenna lines up there and then stick it down take a clamp I like the surface area of the red part of these clamps and they're really strong putting your finger in one of these things hurts um, substantially and so um, it's a, uh, I know that it has enough clamping pressure that it's going to work like that and I'll leave that there for quite some time but in the meantime before it completely dries I'm going to take some acetone and a clean, a uh, clean room wipe and I'm going to go around and <laughs> using my nail I'm going to get down into the, into the, uh, the crack as best I can to clean up any any excess adhesive that's come out. Work my way around the edge, cleaning it up, making it look nice and pretty. Um, and if I need to, I can go back when that's done curing and give it one last final pass, uh, make sure it looks as good as it can. So this repair is very similar to the Series 4. Now this again uh, is not a repair that I would recommend doing unless you have substantial um, substantial uh, experience in the in this industry. And I wouldn't attempt doing a Series 5 unless you've done, say, I mean, even like a hundred of the Series 4. You need to. Um, it's, it's pretty serious stuff.